Hello and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99, where we've got 99 cards, because Commander's number one. I am one of your hosts, Daniel. I'm joined with both Slothy and Brian today. Slothy, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing uh, pretty well, thanks. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing good. I just woke up from a nap. We usually record earlier than this, and this is uh, my bedtime. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. No, other than that, really good. We got lots of games in last night. Brian, Brian was out playing and... They were fun games, right, Brian? The salt, the salt had turned my stomach. Yeah, Brian. Brian, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I did enjoy the games with the Dean last night. I haven't played against stacks in quite some time. And it was Connor made me laugh last night. My brother, we were playing with him, Brian, uh, me, Brian, Connor, Dean played for a long time last night. And Connor's just like, I'm used to maybe Dean playing stacks. He's like, but the three of you playing stacks was just too much. <laughs> What uh, what were you playing there, Dan? Uh, I was I was playing things like uh, Thalion, the Get Rock, just annoying mm. stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, it was. I was having a nice time. I was gonna put together an Ariette, but I was tired yesterday after work, so. Yeah. I started building that. Uh, some really cool commanders have come out of this set. Mm -hmm. I like that card that I pulled yesterday for Ariette. Yeah, in your list. Mm -hmm. We uh we decided we'll take a minute or two to actually take a breather. Uh, we've got the face to face event coming up, so rather than just rush into these decks and give you guys substandard deck lists that are rushed, we want to just go with a few that we've been meaning to get off the docket. There's been so many, right? How can you even yeah. get through all of them even before like a new set releases? Well, that's the neat part. You don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. We're going to six episodes a week. Perfect. Right. Hey, um, if you can feed my kids, <laughs> by kids, I mean my cats. <laughs> Mow. <laughs> um, so we uh, I really, really liked the team up commanders and we haven't really got a chance to get into them, but I love them. The team up commanders are such a cool concept. It's friends and enemies working together, which is really how. A lot of EDH games should go while you try to beat your opponents, right? Talking to the table is a great time. So I wanted to... For some, oh, for some reason, like Captain Captain Planet pops into my head, by our powers yeah. combined. By our powers combined, we are still <laughs> angry at Dean. <laughs> <laughs> it's the... Like I said, the, the team-up commanders were such a cool concept, and we, we've got like Azor and Alenda together in this deck, right? Uh, Azor is like the Azorius Law Mage kind of thing. We've got Alenda, which is like the noble vampires there. She's kind of revered as a god to them. And Azor being a giant sphinx? Yeah. Azor the Lawbringer. He's in the deck too. Yes, he should. Yeah, I think yeah. Alenda... No, I didn't put Alenda in the deck because this was this was a hard list to cut down because this one's pretty pretty simple to... Pilot, you can really, really cut the list down if you cut one or two cards. We'll, we'll get to those. But I just want to talk about what these commanders are and why I like them so much. So Alenda and Azor is three, one white, one blue, one black for a 6-6 six, six Vampire Knight Sphinx. That's pretty cool tribes. Mm -hmm. We have Flying, we have Ward 2. That's wicked. We've got Evasion love, twice. Love those stats. Yeah. We have an attack trigger. When Alenda and Azor attacks, you may pay X, white, blue, black if you do draw X cards. Now, generally, that's where a commander like this stops, and that's where it becomes kind of weak, right? Because you want to you wanna put as much mana as you can into that draw ability, obviously, to take full advantage. But then you have no other creatures, and you're kind of stuck building pillow for it, right? All your mana is going into this draw ability, so you don't have mana for your other spells. And... This commander's solving that. So we have at the beginning of each end step, not just yours, each, you may pay four life. If you do, you create a number of one, one white, or sorry, not white, one, one black vampire knight creature tokens with life link equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Uh, this is just such a strong ability. Yeah, absolutely. This got out of hand when I was running the test games with this. I, I just really, really liked this commander because it, it the draw is stapled in, right? Yep. So I, I went really, really hard into Mana Rocks. You are not going to have trouble casting a thing in this list. Near, <laughs> nearly nearly a quarter of the whole deck list is, is Mana Rocks. Mm -hmm. 
because I wanted. I could just see like um, I could even see like because I, I I Sammy know how you built it because I've got to see it in a gameplay. Um, I'm just like if you could also see it being built around forcing other people to draw and like I'm thinking consecrate sphinx force myself to draw even, and then trigger that ability. Even with a consecrated sphinx, these are life linking vampires. E even if yeah. you just you draw your two and and every time they draw and you pay for life, you're still getting two power of life linkers minimum. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll jump into this like thick section of artifacts because it's a big chunk of the deck here. Take us away. So we're starting off with Bonder's Ornament, three colorless. Tap it, add one mana of any color. You can pay four and tap it. And each player who controls a permanent named Bonder's Ornament draws a card. Yep. Hey, group hug if you're playing Bonder's Ornament. Yeah, right. Bonder's Tribal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we've got Charcoal Diamond, two mana, enters tapped and can tap for black. Yeah. Love it. Nice, simple. The This section is really, really budget. For a mana ramp section, you're pretty good here. Yeah, the total is like... 2650. Yeah. Uh, we have a commander sphere. Three mana, you tap, add one mana of any color, your commander's identity, and draw a card. I really like these things that let me draw a card on another turn if I need to, so I can make those vampires later. Mm -hmm. The the utility in it, um, especially like like game, you're like, oh, like I'm maybe needing to look for like a response to something or some way that I can get a kill off. You can then start sacrificing all of these mana rocks late game to, to be able to get that additional draw. Truth. Mm -hmm. uh, the next card we have is Crowded Crypt, two and a black artifact. I've never seen this card before. Um, tap it to add one black. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Four, two black. T um, tap it. Sacrifice Crowded Crypt. Create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token with decayed for each corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. This That's pretty was, neat. This one really put in work in the pre-con it came in. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like The Walking Dead, all the hands like coming out of the door. What's, nice about, dead open inside. what's nice about this yeah. is you're going to net so many vampires and people are going to obviously want to board wipe you. Mm -hmm. And this makes it real scary to board wipe. Please, they'll all come back. Well, yeah, well. exactly. Well, if you <laughs> board wipe, you're basically doubling the power. Their raw power is 1-1. One, one. Now they're up to 2-2s. Two, yeah. And angry. And, and decayed is... A creature with decayed can't block. When it attacks, you sack it at the end of combat. But basically, it's like a, it's like a final, like, I'm going to get you for yeah. board wiping me. I'm going to get you. I, I like it's a nice little vindictive. <laughs> uh, next one we've got here is Darksteel Ingot three mana it's got indestructible and you can tap it for one mana of any color yep yeah. nice and I, fair. I never see this um, I could probably use so many like a whole lot more like I said this is this whole section's mana rocks because we really really want to I want to trigger that attack every time this is not a commander. If you don't want to attack people and you think it's mean to, don't do that. You you should constantly be vampire attacking people and Alinda and Azor. Whatever, it doesn't matter who they are. They're, they're, your friend's stuck on three mana. Boo-hoo, you're getting bonked with six Sphinx damage because I want to draw cards. Yeah, it's... Yeah. So I, 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 would like, I would let you draw if I could, but it's it's me who draws. Sorry. <laughs> best, best I can do is make 60 vampires. Maybe, maybe my vampires can help you out. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, we've got our Demir Locket, three mana, tap to add a black or a blue. And then it has the four, like the quadra hybrid of black and blue. You can sack it, draw two cards. Again, really nice if you need to catch up in vampires and you need some last minute blockers. Mm -hmm. Ruth. And then we have the Demir Signet, uh, which is two colorless. And you can pay one and tap it and add a blue and a black. Uh, then we've got Firemind Vessel, four mana, it enters tapped, and you can tap for two mana of different colors. I like this one. I also like this one, just a it's, bunch. It's just fun. 
Well, it, it mana fixes it pretty with, well, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Especially when you got a deck that's like three or more colors. It's insanely helpful. Right. I could probably use a few of these too. I haven't even I don't think I've seen this. The Firemind? Or it's been a very long time. Fireminder? Yeah. Uh that was from War of the Spark. It just got reprinted, but they're stu- they're shockingly out of stock. I don't know why. Damn. Yeah, I, I took I took <laughs> all of them. Firemind. No why. It's, it's been one of my favorite rocks for a while. Mm-hmm. Especially on a nice game. If you can turn to this, you know, turn one soul ring, turn two firemind. You're you're in a really good position to go into turn mm-hmm. three, raw six mana, cast your Azor and yeah. Meta. Having doubled the mana for the what turn it is, yeah. 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 And that what turn turn four is I'm um, bonking people. Yeah, you bonk on turn four, you draw seven cards. We're we're all happy. Yeah. That's the person that got bonked. Uh, a really, really nice one in this deck, just so you know, would be a blink moth urn. Just that free mana from all the artifacts would be good, but no one's got Blink Moth Urn right now. There's artifacts are all the rage. Mm-hmm. They're always the rage. Speaking of the rage, I think you'd like this next one, Brian. The General's Kabuto for colorless. It's an equipment. Equipped creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to equipped creature. And equip for two. Yes. Yes, I would. Yeah, it's again, then you can just in, indiscriminately swing. Yeah. To be the commander's Kabuto. True, right? Uh, I would love commander's plates, but again, they shockingly didn't print that in Commander Masters, which was a weird thing to do. Flex. Very weird flex, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also have a Howling Mind because I made the deck, and that's it doesn't matter the list. I would put it in no matter what. I could be like, this Mono Red Goblins. This is my Mono Red Goblins Howling Mind. It's it's just such a universally good card. Yeah. If if you don't have it, well, you are in draw, and you want that additional draw. Uh, but, yeah, I find it very handy because most times you just want that additional gas. Yeah, I just... Can't say enough about Howling Mine. The mine's riches never end, nor do the moans of the spirits doomed to haunt them. It's me. <laughs> Daniel. It's, it's me. They're my, they're, my, they're my moans, and I never stop. <laughs> we, we need to get a, an alt art where the mountain, or the entrance to the mine there is just Dan's face. Just. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up, we've got Letter of Acceptance, a three mana. You can tap it to add one mana of any color or pay two and tap it to sacrifice and draw. You're a wizard. You're a wizard, Daniel. True. I really liked the flavor text of this, uh, kind of foretold what was happening in the story right now. Uh, it's the letter unfolding, mm-hmm. inviting the twins to Strixhaven. Will saw a chance for arcane study. Rowan just saw a chance for power. Yeah. Fits. Then we have the liquid uh, liquid metal torque. Two colorless. Tap to add one one colorless. Um, tap tap it or target non land permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other type until end of turn. I really enjoy those these cards. Mm-hmm. I just like this as a nice little mana rock too, right? I guess I never actually thought of it as a mana rock. Yeah, yeah. I I don't use it for the other utility at all, and this is just a two drop because I want to trigger as much. I really want my commander on the field as fast as possible, and mm-hmm. I want to be swinging. Mm-hmm. Like turn turn two, I want to even if I just have six raw mana. Turn two, I want to at least trigger three draws. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Right. Uh, we also have a marble diamond, a nice easy two mana comes into play tapped. Uh, you add a white. Play as a mana source. And then we've got the Ores of Signet. Two mana. You can pay one and tap to add white black. Then the Phyrexian Atlas. Three colorless. Tap to add one mana of any color. And corrupted when Phyrexian Atlas becomes tapped. Each opponent who has three or more poison counters loses one life. But you're obviously not using that ability. Don't care about the poison counters one bit. We want mana. 
the art on that card is stunning. It's really cool. I would love a I would love a big full art one like the Karn one back there. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, we, play mat. Huh? Play mat. That, that would be a nice play mat too. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this prismatic lens, two mana. You tap to add a colorless, or you can filter your mana, one tap, add one mana of any color. Yeah. Weren't you talking about this yesterday? Or I feel like there was someone that was talking about this card the other day. No, I, I think you're I think you're thinking of Connor playing the scarecrow to filter mana. Oh, maybe. Uh, the next one, obviously, Sky Diamond, two colorless, comes into the battlefield tapped, and you can add one one blue to the mana pool. Then we've got good old Soaring, pay one, taps for two. Should be banned. Never. No, no. <laughs> That's uh, one of the things, definitely, that, that should have been, that should have been, like, printed more. It, it's not Boring. there's not enough yeah they were scarce yeah. in the in the packs um we have this spectral searchlight three mana choose a player that player adds one mana of any color they choose this could be group hug yeah. are you playing a group hug i could be i could be. I don't know. The you tell me yeah <laughs> De depends uh depends do you let me bonk you with azor <laughs> no <laughs> that's what happened the other day yo sphinx about it Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. Okay, oh. hit the hit the sound bar. <laughs> nope. Goodbye, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> I, I just hear both both of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good clean fun. Obviously, with all that card draw thought vessel, two colorless, you have no maximum hand size. You could tap to add what colorless. Um, then we've got Thran Dynamo, four mana, taps for three. Also good. We have a Trans Morgan Altar, uh, three mana. You pay a black, sack a creature, add uh, three colorless, or two, sack a creature, create a th two, uh, three, three colorless zombie artifact creature token, activate only as a sorcery. If you have the budget for it, a Phyrexian Altar or Ashnod's Altar are much better in, in the place of this. But mm -hmm. oh. I like that ability, though, you can because you can put your own stuff into the crowded crypt with that that card. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but again, you could still also with the ash nods, right? Or altar. Of but, yeah, that's very true too. mill people. Altar would also be good. And then the last one that we have in here is Warren Power Stone, three colorless. Warren's Power Stone enters the battlefield tapped. And you can tap that two colorless to your mana pool. Yeah. Like I said, a yeah. very, very thick segment of just mana rocks. Pretty much nothing but. That's a lot. Um, yeah, I think the... they're really weak. Oh, go ahead, sir. Oh, I'm just looking through. Yeah, there's like two cards in here that don't tap for mana. Yeah, and one's Howling Mine, which should yeah. tap for mana. Could you imagine if they just reprinted Howling Mine? The same exact same way, but let me tap it so that I could I could control if people got the draw. I would be in charge of the group hug. I'd I'd have such a dilemma. I'd put it in every deck still. Um yeah. I I was gonna put the uh I thought about putting in swift foot boots and lightning greaves and stuff. But again, my commander having haste doesn't really matter because I'm dumping this out the, the moment it can. I'm all aggression with this deck. You got a counter spell? You probably got me. You probably got me there, but <laughs> but you know what I mean? So I'm I'm already out of mana. I don't I don't have I'm not dumping this down for nine, paying one to equip, or dumping it in for six, paying one to equip, and then even paying four more. Like, you know, I'm I'm not going eleven mana deep to draw one card. I'll brainstorm at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, let's do our creatures. We got not very many of them. Sure. Only another fourth of your deck. <laughs> uh, first creature we got is the Alms Collector. Three and a white for a three, four cat cleric with flash. If an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. Cat We're cleric. Cool. Probably mine. Cat <laughs> cleric. Mao. <laughs> There is, fair. there is no justice when some profit and others go without. Mao. Mao. 
you want your no you, you go, your you go ahead, so we have azor the Lawbringer, two two white and two blue legendary creature sphinx flying when azor the Lawbringer enters the battlefield each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn that's when your azor... brago. oh mm. no one attack or no one can cast yeah because you just keep blinking it in and out so no one could cast instant and sorceries until so you want well, them I to. say so. <laughs> uh, and then whenever Azor attacks, you may pay X a white and two blue. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. On theme for what we want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, we have this blood artist, uh, one in a black, a zero one vampire. Whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain a life. This deck is also kind of a pseudo vampire deck. Mm. There, there's some good vampires in it, and you make a lot of vampire tokens. So there's a lot of vampire lords, so I could get that. Yeah, you could make this yeah. a vampire deck, like just a vampire deck, very easy, and still have it be really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, next one we've got here is Corpse Knight. It is white and a black for a two-two zombie knight. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. This can kill Pretty everyone really fast. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get to a I point where I'm, I draw 10, I pay 4 life at the end step, and ever, I drain 30 damage across the table. Ouch. Yeah. That's a big turn. A little bit of yikes. The, the next card I do enjoy is Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, 2 white. Legendary enchantment creature, demigod. Daxos toughness is equal to your devotion to white. And whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life. I love oh. the double trigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's rough too. Defiant Bloodlord. Five double black for a four five flying vampire. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And again, we're making life linking vampires. It's kind of gross. Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that you don't have veto but i can uh, again it's this was a yeah, hard list tight, to cut down list because i really yeah. really wanted to draw like I, all, again almost a quarter of my deck being mana rocks isn't an accident <laughs> i just stumbled upon these guys i swear i need i needed it desperately i needed that mana so badly i was thirsting for it <laughs> um next one we've got here is gix yogmoth praetor one double black for a 3-3 three, three legendary Phyrexian Praetor. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, his controller may pay one life, and if they do, draw a card. And four triple black, discard X cards, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library. You may play lands and cast spells from among them without paying their mana cost. Gross. Now, hear me out. <laughs> okay. Hear me Don't out like here. like it when it starts with this. Hear me out here. <laughs> We could really draw a lot of cards in this, so it's pretty easy to uh, it's pretty easy to discard fifty cards because the X isn't isn't mana; it's just seven, and we can hit seven mana in our in our deck, no problem. We can hit seven mana like it's nobody's business. So, if we can discard like fifty cards and go Brian's deck deep, fifty cards in, and ca like play his lands and cast spells, that's great. Without paying their mana cost, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, we can really, really go deep and see what's uh, what's what in there. I, I like that this isn't uh, until end of turn. You can play lands and cast spells. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? I really, really wanted Gix just for that discard ability because that's such a. Uh, again, we're not going to be we're not short on mana on this at all. Like that's it's a lot of. With how much it's a draw deck, you're you're not gonna miss land drops really. You may maybe you'll be like mana out a few games, but you're there's a lot of draw in this deck. So having these uh things to dump my mana into, my commander, my gix, even the next card is really, really fun. Like the next card, Brian, please take that one away. We have uh Jazal Goldmane two two white legendary creature cat warrior. Wow. First wow. strike. Wow. First strike. Three, two, white. Attacking creatures you control get plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Too many. 
Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Again, we've got 10, 10 vampires that are all now 10, 10 lifelinkers. I'll pay that for life. I'll pay that all day. Yeah. And then you, then I gain 30 life and then, or I gain how much ever life and then defiant blood lord someone to death. Right. Uh, we've also got this Knight of Dawn's Light. One and a white for a 2-2 human knight first strike. If you would gain life, you gain that much plus one instead. Again, solid with our 1-1 one, one vampires. Mm -hmm. And one and a white, it gains 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Irexians destroyed my village, but they could not break my hope. He's fighting alongside some of them here. Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one we've got here is Linden, the Steadfast Queen. Uh, triple white for a 3-3 legendary human noble with vigilance. And whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. Oh, long time no see there, Linden. Yeah, I took this one from Brian. I, I discovered it in his pile. <laughs> It's a shame it doesn't trigger with the vampires, but still incredibly solid. Yeah, right? I wish. Oh, yeah, because they're black vampires. Yeah, I know. But I really just like the ability of just that passive life gain. Because, again, we're trying. We've got to pay four life, right? It's not much to mm -hmm. make up, but I just like having that. Uh, I think Linden had a nice place in the deck because of it. Do you know who can. Who can. Uh, uh, you help, help make your, uh, your vampires white? Painter Your servant. brother was Bob Ross. Yeah, painter servant. Yeah. Um, again, Linden's Linden's a pet card to me. I really, really just like Linden. I've I ever since it's been like released, I love the art. I love the effect. So I put Linden in basically every deck I can. If I'm playing uh if I'm playing the life game. On her is amazing. Yeah, if I'm playing life game, it's just a pet card that goes in the deck. And and like Slothy said, it's not gonna trigger vampires. You could replace it with something else, but I just really, really like Linden. I, I just love that trigger, so. That's I mean, why you still you still got 12 creatures that will trigger Linden, not well, including your commander. I was going to say and the commander. But again, it just to me, it's a pet card. I just really like its ability. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love I love I'm going to take this one, too, as well. I also yeah. love this reprint dropping this down like that. Oh, you don't know how happy it's made me at dollar seventy nine on this card. We've got Mangar the Diplomat. Three and a white for a 2-4 human cleric with lifelink, again, on theme. Whenever an opponent attacks with two creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or Planeswalker you control, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. So, again, really, really easy to be able to, they go to declare attack, they attack me, they already drew two, or they cast two spells, I drew a card, they go to attack me and declare attackers, I, oh no, I, I can't pay till end step, but still lets me make my vindictive vampires at the end. Mm-hmm. The next one here I do enjoy is Marauding Blight Priest 2 in a black vampire, uh, vampire cleric. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Yeah. All the life loss. That's a uh, heavy metal flavor text really quick. I hadn't read that. Yeah. Brian, please. Vampires. The vampires never had gods. We followed our blood chiefs. Now they are now they are gone. What is left? Destruction and death. Any friends? That no, is enough. Destruction, destruction and death, my friends. That is enough. Oh, I'm gonna use that in a song. That that's that's heavy <laughs> metal. That's... Uh, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, you go ahead with the next one, please. Sure. Yeah, this next one's an absolute house in this deck. Um, mirror entity, two and a white for a one-one shapeshifter with changeling. Uh, you can pay X until end of turn. Creatures you control have base power toughness X X and gain all creature types. You're good. Ouch. Yeah. Bong. Ouch. With the amount of uh, ramp and stuff in this deck, I don't see it being less than a lot most times. <laughs> Yeah, uh, dropping this less than a lot. <laughs> dropping this down is gonna hurt. Yeah, that's like a kill on sight card. Yeah, you can't you can't let me uh, can't let me got to counter that one for sure. I get not it. not even a destroy. It is and you have to exile that. Get out, get it out of here. No, you have yeah. to. Even still, I can respond. You got it. That's got to die on the stack. Whoops. Um, we also have this Pippin yeah. guard of the Citadel. One white, one blue. 
It is, sorry, my list moved. Vigilance Ward 1, 2-2. Two, two. Tap it, another target creature control gains protection from the card type of your choice until end of turn. Great commander protection. Yeah. Card type, interesting. Yeah, again, we can make it so you got a flyer? That's fine. I'm coming at you. Pro creatures. That's really deep, yeah. actually. Yeah, like you, got, you got a path of exile? That's fine. Pro instance. instance. Yep. I like that. The next one we have here is Quiza. Augur of Agonies. One white, blue, black. Legendary creature, Cephalid Advisor. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. That could be a cool commander, too. I, I have that one as a commander. It's very fun. A different deck, because, again, this one wants to mana ramp so much. The other one, you just, everything's draw. Yeah. <laughs> this is, like, almost uh, half the deck budget. Go ahead, Sophie. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got Shieldred the Apocalypse. Two double oh, yeah. black for a 4-5 legendary Phyrexian Praetor with Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, gain two life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Yeah, that one's rough. When I was growing up, I always assumed that the foils were always more expensive than the non-foils, but here's $5 difference on the non-foils. Hmm. Probably. Uh, this one, it's going to just keep going up. It's too early to reprint it, and it's too good to not be used. That That's huge life gain for us, and that's just passive. I don't, I don't even care about you guys losing life when you draw. It's it's just how much I'm going to gain. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I dump 10 into X, I gain 20 life. We're looking good. Uh, I feel like with the amount of life gain you've put in this deck, it could be very easy to go a uh, Aether Flux route with this commander as well. Oh, I totally agree. Yep. This, uh, like I said, there's a lot of ways to build this. I really wanted to just mana sink. I love to mana mm -hmm. sink. But... It, just as a passive life gain commander, yeah, you'd be up there really, really fast. And then if you wanted to go more of a life gain route, you'd put your Rocks Faith Menders in, that kind of stuff, your Alhamaret's mm -hmm. Archive, which uh, Alhamaret's Archive would be a house in this. I just, like I said, look, maybe you could cut Linden for Alhamaret's Archive, but I, I leave I leave my pet cards in. Mm -hmm. um, we've got so from the guy telling me to get rid of my Smothering Tithe. No, you, you, you're you not doing it because you <laughs> love Smothering Tithe. You're doing it because it's a good card. Unshackle yourself, old man. <laughs> Le learn to build with new things no one no one sees the stuff i'm playing coming not even me I, I don't even know what's broke, don't fix it yeah i don't even know what's in the decks half the time uh, <laughs> uh we have soul warden it's one white for a one one whenever another creature enters you gain one life again just great for us making so many tokens yeah Then we have Soul Attendant. Uh, I got caught up reading uh, Soul Warden's uh, flavor text. Uh, Soul's Attendant, one white. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you may gain one life. I love the Soul Sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Suture Priest. One and a white for a 1 1 Phyrexian Cleric. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain one life. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Love it. I want to see you kill somebody with this card. When they cast one creature, they've got one life. <laughs> That's fun. Um, we have Villas as well, and we're, we have a deck where we're paying life. So Villas goes in the deck. Five, triple black for an 8-8 eight, eight demon with flying. One black, you pay two life target creature, gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Very, very good way to use your life to get rid of annoying things like an Avacyn, indestructible kind of things, whatever. But also, whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. So it's really, really nice to be able to, again, we want to trigger our draws as much as we can. So even on an opponent's mm -hmm. turn, I save five black mana. I lose 10 life. I pay four. So like I lose 10 life, I'll draw 10 cards from that mm -hmm. 10 life, uh, life loss and then draw 10 from that. And then at the end step, make like 10 vampires with life link. Pretty good. Once again, with... Uh... Aether Flux, pay 50 life, make 50 vampires. Bonk. Right? Bonk. Oh, man. And then they come in and you gain 50 life if you have even one of the Soul Sisters out. Yeah, we, we really passively mm -hmm. gain just a crazy amount of life. And that's 
Again, I just like the floodboard tokens. I'm a simple man. I just like tokens on the field. I think it's fun. Do yeah. I bring tokens? No. Do I bring dice to represent the tokens? Also, no. I'm not a good person to have in your play group, but Brian brings them. Brian brings the dice. If we're playing here, where we play often, I got dice for days. We're good then. Everybody find yourself a Brian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're trying to say here, Dan? <laughs> hey, that's, just, that's just life advice in general. Everyone find Brian. Brian's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, we feel out, Brian. Yeah, I'll finish this last one, too. We've got Zulaport Cutthroat, one in the black for a 1-1. One, one. When it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Again, this makes board wiping me terrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a hundred vampires, a board wipe. Good game. Yeah, it's bad time for you. GLHF. Good luck, have fun. Start us off with our very budget enchantment section of nine dollars and ninety cents. <laughs> Woo. Okay. This one I absolutely love. Dictative crew fix one, two blue enchantment flash. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. I have this the uh, nice foil one. Love it. Like, it looks so good. Dictate's so cool. I Like I've said, I, I keep saying it on episodes, it's really fun to do the list because then the cards are giant on our screen while we're looking. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's I, I like seeing flavor text that I just never see, and I like seeing just big artwork. Yeah, there's a lot of little details that you just don't notice when you're just holding the card in front of you. Yeah, right. Got to get in there with the magnifying glass. <laughs> uh, we've got Etchings of the Chosen. One white and a black. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Uh, creatures of the Chosen type get plus one, plus one. And you can pay one sack of creature of the Chosen type. Per a creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Absolute monster card. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the creature type? Sphinxes? V- vampire. <laughs> make your vampires one an extra one one you have an endless amount of vampires to sack to make your commander indestructible yeah it's mean i love tokens right mm-hmm. uh speaking of tokens we have inspiring leader because you got it such a uh, good card. huh such a good card it's such a good card uh two and a white it's a legendary enchantment background commander creatures you own have creature tokens you control get plus two plus two I picked up this feat in my D- with my D&D character. Nice. Yeah, give everyone temporary hit points. I like it. Your family needed a farmer, so you tilled. Your town needed a fighter, so you trained. When your people needed a leader, you knew what you had to do. Hit them Run with a hundred vampires. <laughs> That's how I lead. <laughs> four, four vampires. That's my, my political platform is life-linking vampires. But what will this do for the common folks? Silence! They're, they're livestock. <laughs> um, this one is fantastic as well. Teferi's Ageless Insight. Two, two blue. If you would draw a card except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. Yeah. Double down. Why not? Yep. And the final enchantment we forgot here is Thought Reflection for double blue. If you would draw a card, draw two instead. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen this artwork. I think that's the normal artwork, isn't it? Is it? Let's see. It is slightly altered from the normal artwork. Oh, yeah, true. Hmm. What I think is interesting personally is that they had someone named Chris Seaman draw two men in the sea. I find that I find that very interesting, very entertaining personally. Where are we going next here? Uh, let's do our, we'll do our sorcery. We'll end instant because there's actually some instants here. here. Slothy will be proud. Um, we'll start it off with days undoing. Uh, two and a blue. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into the library. Draw seven if it's my turn and the turn. Which goes down to my end step. And yeah. I pay my life, get my vampires. I don't know if you'd be able to pay your life in this. And the turn, exile all spells and abilities from the stack, discard down to your max hand size. So it goes to cleanup step. Mm -hmm. So no vampire payoff if you days undoing. Womp, womp, womp. 
Do you want to remove it now or? Nope. Still love it. I still like a nice reset. It's still seven cards that you can draw. Yep. Well, I guess that's three, right? Instead of like what Echoes of Age of Eons or whatever it is, or Echoes of Aeons um, is mm-hmm. five. Uh, it's six, but it's got a flashback for three. Mm-hmm. But uh, just days on doing is I, I just like putting it in decks. Yeah. I, I like to reset it. It's very fun as well. If you can, uh, if you can be obnoxious and get this off really early in the game, like uh, an ideal situation is we like turn one land soul ring arcane signet turn two days undoing everyone else's hand away that they kept to try play can't mulligan that can't mulligan that right and then and then I'm, <laughs> and then I'm sitting probably already five mana deep while everyone's searching for a second or third land because I've thrown away the hand they chose to keep that's true yeah turn one wins a change most frustrating play you can do love it I do have a wins of change. Let, let's if you fun. if you roll first, and Brian often rolls first, and you drop one red mana wins of change, you'll uh, it, it should be called attitude change because everyone's gonna, <laughs> everyone's going to have a different attitude for the rest of the game. That's one of my favorite turn one plays of all time because it's a that is a true test of a deck. You get zero mulligan after that, and everyone they found a playable hand, they kept it, and you're like, nah, next. It's brutal. <laughs> Turn one wins a change. Is, it's, I, I stand by it. I, I preach that gospel. Mm-hmm. It's a rough one. That's good. <laughs> I enjoy that. Uh, you want to take this next one here, Brian? Yeah, we got... Uh, I picked up, actually, a play set of these. Foil, Feed the Swarm, One in the Black. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Um, an opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permits mana, co- mana value. I like that. That would be cool in foiling with that red. Mm-hmm. I like that, Hugh. Um, next up, we've got Predator's Hour. I'm going to pull that one up. That's small. Um, this is a one in a part. black. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain menace, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at and play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast that spell. We get a lot, we get a lot of vampire tokens. I'm really I'm really underselling it. We get a yeah. lot. And get, giving them menace too is gross. Gross, yeah. But again, just even if you get getting hit with like 10 one ones, that's painful, but whatever, right? Life's a resource, we move on. Mm-hmm. But getting hit and getting 10 cards of your library exiled. It is quite yeah. a different story. Mm-hmm. And I think when we played, you were using one of the countdown dice for oh. your vampires. Oh, yeah. I, or I, not I, countdown dice, uh, your uh, the life the counters, life. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had, in, in the game that Brian saw, I had over 90 vampires. It was pretty silly. Oh, jeez. The vampires get a little silly. Um, An anointed procession would be good in the deck, but I really find you don't need it. Um, yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a nice preordain, just one mana scry to draw a card. Great starter. I like it. Yeah, lets you get that advantage point. Yeah, yeah, right. This is how I won the game that Brian was in with it. Slothy, take it away. Sure. Uh, we got Sickening Dreams, one in a black. Uh, as an additional cost to play it, discard X cards, and it deals X damage to each creature and each player. Yep. I don't know if I've seen this before but i absolutely love that the oh, yeah. patriarch dreams of vile plague it's again you're life linking you don't really care you're going to be you're going to be above you're, everyone in life yeah you can just discard as many as the next highest throwing away 40 cards anyone's played a discard deck 40 cards is not that many cards to have in your hand yeah i like that too many in the game 40 damage to each creature 40 damage to that it's uh, it's uh, quite the board wipe is all I'll say. I have my brush taunter. Forty damage back to you, sir. No, you'd be like you'd be dead bomb. before that would happen. <laughs> right. Um, I put in true. really quickly before we go into the instance. I put in all of the draw lands that are from. I think it's all will be one. Yeah. Uh, so Surgical Bay, Fair Basilica, and Dross Pits. I really like those cards. They enter tap. They tap for one of each of the colors, black, blue, white, and then, like, each individually, sorry. 
and then you pay the blue one obviously one and the blue the white one one and the white and you just sack a draw card i'd say i think it's just a nice utility land for late game when you're full of lands and looking for something to really fill your hand mm-hmm mm-hmm Uh, actually, I don't think I've really looked at those. The spheres. Yeah, they're kind of cool. I like I said, I've been I've been using them. I think they're nice. Obviously, you got to play a reliquary tower in a deck like this. How could you not? How could you not? Right. I do like the Razor Tide Bridge, the indestructible tap lands. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I've been building with a lot of the more budget lands lately. Is it because I'm out of lands? Sure. That's not the point. <laughs> it's not the point. Um, playing arena has made me just realize like, meh, tap lands aren't the end of the world. Sunlit Marsh. Especially, yeah, especially when I'm so like so heavy with mana rocks, whatever. Mm-hmm. Being a turn or two behind when I'm already gonna be a turn or two ahead. Meh. Yeah. I think it's uh I find since I've been doing this, I find that a lot of people are not as afraid of what I'm doing if I'm just dropping tap lands. If I'm playing duels, everyone's like, whoa. Ooh, this deck's crazy budget. And it's like I'm playing like Ken with Group Hug. I'm just trying to tempting worm the table. It's garbage. But you know what I mean? I just I find that you don't feel like the threat if you're like, I'll idyllic beach friend. They're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you're playing yeah. like here's my mana rocks, and they're like, All right. Yeah. All right, Slothy, take us into our instance. I would love to. Uh, first one we've got is Blue Sun Zenith, X triple blue. The target player draws X cards, shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. Okay. I find that one's Great just a just, staple, yeah, for me. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I love the cards that, that allow you to, to reuse them, like shuffle it back in. Yeah. The next instant we have here is Decoy Gambit, two and a blue. Uh, instant, for each opponent, choose up to one target creature that player controls, then return that creature to its owner's hand, unless its controller has you draw a card. That's not too bad. We will distract them. The rest of you get out of here. I like that one. It's kind of mean. Um, we've got D-Spark. I, I love D-Spark. Mm-hmm. Exile target permanent with mana value four or greater. That one really, really puts in some work. Yeah, I I love all those Orzhov abil- uh, spells that let exile a permanent. Um, I, I would try to use those over destroy um, any day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that Speaking. deals really quickly. That deals a lot with uh, in like it, it deals with your indestructible things, but big problem mm-hmm. cards like your smothering ties that we mentioned earlier. Those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, speaking of destroy, we've got disenchant one and away destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's one card that you rarely ever see, and it's common. And no, I I rarely ever see someone just I disenchant that. I love a good disenchant. Artifact and enchant removal is a must. Mm-hmm. Right. Then we have Dream Fracture, one and two blue. Counter target spell, its controller draws a card. Draw a card. Group hug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you can't have your spell. Yeah, right. Um, we have a nice fracture again, one of those ores off removal. Destroy target artifact enchantment or planeswalker. I like that. Yeah. Um then we've got Ink Shield, three white black. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to you uh this turn. For each one damage prevented this way, create a two one white and black inkling creature token with flying. Daniel. This is another one that, if- that one out of me. Oh, yeah. He's like, I feel like you have an ink shield, and then yeah. it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've got, I've got good threat assessment on that. On one of the, I think that was in one of the YouTube games. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, uh, yeah, that's definitely an ink shield. There, I saw, I saw what you had. <laughs> it was not fun. <laughs> ink shield's one of my favorite cards printed. I love Strixhaven. Mm-hmm. Strixhaven, it's so good. 
So it is a really good set. Are we going back to Arcavios next year? I hope so. I hope uh, they give us the other dragons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The uh, next card on the list, though, is Opt. One blue, scry one, then draw a card. I like that. Yeah. Brian, I want you to take the next one, too. <laughs> so we have Tempest of Light, two and a... <laughs> no. Uh, two and a white, destroy all enchantments. I've really been packing destroy all enchantments in because of the play groups I play in. This is a 35 cent house. We've got five enchantments in here, and though I would be sad to lose any of them, um, I'm casting this when it's hurting. This sucks against the Zank deck I built, which has 50 auras in it. Wow. Yikes. Shaklonk, yeah. yeah. Take this into area, Brian. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, right? No. That's I'll a mean one. That. Um, this next one is a great game ender. Uh, Transcendent Message, X Quadra Blue with Convoke, draw X cards. And we've got so many tokens that that's not really going to bug us. Mm -hmm. This can be an out of the blue, even if we only have a few. Uh, it, it's kind of fun if we can put like, even just our commander is uh, able, able to tap for a blue. And then mm -hmm. have three blue up, just three blue. No one's going to be expecting that I'm going to draw 50 cards with that with that up. That's very true. I I, I really enjoyed this because I, I did play this card in Ovika. Same thing with all those goblins. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's a, it's a really, really cool card. And I bet in Ovika, the same thing, powerhouse, because you make so many goblins so fast. It Come, yeah. comes out of nowhere. And that's kind of why I switched up to Saruman, um, just making one big token rather than so many other ones, because I feel like it's more exploitable with, like, Goblin Bombardment and, um, oh, the other red enchantments whenever creatures come into play deal that much damage. Yeah. Uh, we have our Utter End as well. I just wanted to take this one because I love it. I love Zergo. Uh, it's 2-1 one, white, one black for exile target non-land permanent. Uh, again, just a great staple when you've got them sitting around. Mm -hmm. I came seeking a challenge. All I found was you. <laughs> Slothy, you got this last one here. Sure. Uh, the last card here is your temple is under attack. Two and a white. You can choose one. You can pray for protection. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Or you can strike a deal to have you and target opponent each draw two cards. A little group hug. Say what? Have you not seen this one? No. This is Sounds a. Good. This has been one of my staple instants for a while. This was from that Baldur's Gate stuff we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. There's tons yeah, of them. Have to. Yeah. There again. It's a nothing cost, right? And uh, yeah. the, you you live to make your creatures indestructible. I know that. You love to live through a board wipe. Mm -hmm. That gets you going. And in a worst case, like I said, you and target opponent each draw two cards. Really good really good way to Perfect. politics your way around and just say like, hey, I'll help you out, but don't swing at me. And this, this one's uh, kind of nice with Alms Collector too. That's funny. Your, your opponent draws one, you draw three. Uh, you could put a notion thief in here too. That would also be mean. Yeah. Old Reacher. Oh wait. Oh, I think Connor had that. Yeah. Notion yeah, thief. Yeah, he's mean. played a band. His oh, band deck. Yeah, we played the first game we played yesterday was uh, Connor and my brother was testing a full no ban list commander. Yeah. And uh, dropping power nine nonsense on the table with it. That's awesome. Yeah, we got time walked. We got, uh, I, I think it was two mocks, a land. Pretty sure he hit two, two mocks, a land, black lotus, and a prime titan. Yeah. In, in like an opener and then time walked us. Nice. It was pretty gross. I, that, that's disgusting. I don't mind prime titan. I still don't think it should be banned, but maybe in, maybe when you have black lotus man available, maybe I could see its problem. <laughs> <laughs> that uh the, the turn one primeval titan was quite an issue yeah yeah no it's uh like i said this has been a really fun deck through and through to play it's uh it's very upgradable from what i have you don't have to 
even like I said, removing Shouldred, removing Linden, just one or two things. An Aether Flux is great in it. You've got so much life, uh, Anointed Procession. Like there's lots of different things you could go. You could make it more life gain. You could make it more vampire matters. But yeah, uh, I just really, really liked this one. This one was just a blast to play. It seems like you're having a good time piloting it there when we were out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I live to draw. I live to draw and enter the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And although I'm not entering the battlefield here, I am certainly drawing. Yeah. Every turn. Do you see what I named this deck, Brian? Sorry? Do you see what I named it? Vampiric Drawings. Vampiric yeah. Drawings. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did definitely do have a good name for your deck. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I try. We try. It's the hardest part of every deck. It's like when you're building a character in uh, in an RPG. Hardest part's naming it. Yeah, right. Bob. I now name you Bob. My my solo character in Baldur's Gate's name is Uncle Sarah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's funny. I really <laughs> like that. But yeah, no, this is uh this is my deck. This is probably one of the ones I'm gonna come out to face to face with. Cause it's uh it's a bit of a stronger deck. The problem with this one is it's kinda hard to uh, tone it down when everything goes so silly with draw, right? Like you got a lot. So gotta blow up those mana rocks. Yeah, vandal blast away, brother. <laughs> then all then then your only worry is the six six finks hitting you every turn. You pack in. I had to put up with that the other time. Yeah, pack Vandal Blast and pack a uh, a flyer. Pack Gaddick Teague and problem solved. Yeah, you're not wrong there. I do love Gaddick Teague, but yeah, no, we'll we'll end there. I do want to know, like, what would you have put into this? Like, do you think this is a fun list? And where's my there's my outro music button? Yeah, let me know what you would do with this. Um, if you are in Alberta and close there or Calgary. We are going to be playing at the face-to-face -face and stuff. We'll be there for the weekend, having a great time. We're going to do some stream games, at least two of the days, I would say. So come on, come play. It'll be fun. You can you can come beat me on stream. It's a good time. So it's fun. We can we can all together join up, join forces, and make Brian die first, as was no, in, as was intended. It has to be the other way. As was intended. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's a great time. Come out and meet us. It'll be a good time, Brian. What's our promo code for that? We don't have that yet. We don't have that yet? Well, we'll find one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get one. Um, yeah, we, we really got to um, talk to them better. Um, yeah. we do have a promo code for, however, is uh, this proxy shop. Yeah. Use the it, code IT99. You'll get some money off. Yeah. If you want to get some of the shoulders and you don't want to pay $100 for a shoulder, I get it. Me neither. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely a good spot. Uh, like, share, subscribe our stuff. If you want to come talk decks with us, Patreon is the place to do it. This is going to be on Patreon for two, three weeks before that's out for everything. So, yeah, everyone, we, we're doing uh, lots of early access stuff. So come join us there. Come chat decks. It's a really, really good time. And, yeah, we will see everyone next week kind of thing. And, yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. And thank yeah. you to Strange Ronin Whipsa and Thunder Emperor Command. I think there was a few more, too, wasn't there? Yeah, we uh, can't forget about... Uh... Calvinist Prime. Yes. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, here's the gentleman that signed up there last week. Yeah. yeah. Definitely come hang out on Patreon. And that's the end. Bye-bye. Toodles. Peace.